Net foreign liabilities. There are three key terms here. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is foreign. So it means there is a transaction between Australia and another country. A liability is one of two things in this case. It's either debt or equity. It does not mean what you learn it means in business studies. Do not get confused. In economics, a liability is different to what it means in business studies. In economics, it means either debt or equity. Okay, so that's what it means by liability. And net means that it's all the liabilities going overseas from Australia to another country, less all the ones coming back. So if I owe, uh, say, Josh over here $20 and he owes me $10, then the, the, net debt that, the net debt I owe to Josh is $10. Because he owes, he owes me 10, I owe him 20. Wait, so net liabilities are 10. Net liabilities are 10. Okay, you don't add them together, you have to take the difference. So this is net. Right, this, this is net. And there are two things I want you to take into account. Also, this is in, as a percentage of GDP. Okay, so this takes into account economic growth. What I want you to take into account, the last 25 years, net foreign liabilities have grown. They were about 45% 25 years ago. Today, they're about 55. They peaked at 60% a few years ago. Traditionally, and to this day, most of it is debt. So most net foreign liabilities in Australia are debt, and debt has been growing over this period. In the 90s, equity grew quite a bit, but then it started falling. In recent years, it's started to pick up a little bit more. The issue with debt, what makes debt different to... So the difference between debt and equity is that equity is more risky. Now you sell your equity, it means you're selling shares, you're selling actual ownership in Australian businesses. If you do that and the business does well, then more dividends go away overseas. Whereas with debt, if you take out a loan, it's, it's less risky for the people putting money into Australia, but it's more risky for the businesses in Australia borrowing from overseas. If you take out debt and you can't repay it, too bad, you still have to repay it. With equity, uh, you have an equity injection into Australia. If you don't make money, if your company doesn't make profit, you don't have to pay it a dividend. And you don't have to repay the capital component either. They've invested in your company, they don't want that money back. With debt, they do. You take out a loan, you have to pay back the loan and interest on the loan. If you issue shares, you have to pay dividends on those shares, but only if your business makes money. Only if you're profitable. Yes. If you buy Qantas shares, yes, you do get dividends on if they pay dividends. So uh, Qantas is an example, that's a good example because they haven't been very profitable recently in the last few years, they have not paid dividends in those years. Whereas the loans they've taken out, they still have to pay the interest on those loans. And they still have to pay that debt back. So if they take out a $100 million loan, they have to pay that $100 million back. Um, so you can see in, in recent years, debt has continually increased, but in the last couple of years, Net foreign liabilities have plateaued a bit. They've moved sideways. It hasn't gone up very much. And that's because equity has been on a bit of a decline. In GDP terms, in proportion to GDP. Because if I just tell you we have um, $500 billion of, of liabilities, $500 billion of debt. Okay, great. Is that for the Australian economy? Is it for the US economy? Is it for the economy of uh, Malta, which is very small? Okay, that $500 billion is very different depending on the size of the economy. So, in order to standardize that, we measure it as a percentage of GDP. Alright? Net foreign liabilities. Foreign debt. That's when a lender provides a loan to a borrower in another, uh, another economy. Foreign equity is when an investor buys shares in a company based in another economy. That's in either direction. Australians can uh, give a loan to someone in China, to a business in China, and a Swiss investor can buy shares in an Australian company. It can go either way. Net foreign liabilities is debt and equity owed to other economies, less debt and equity owed by other economies. So it's the net value. The amount that Australia is, is owed by other economies, less the amount that we owe to other economies. And that gives you your net, li net foreign liabilities, and it's a deficit. So we owe more. Um, and finally, Australia's net foreign liabilities are almost 60% of GDP, of which the majority is foreign debt. Um, Andrew, you had a question? Can a foreign investor invest more than 10%? Yes. There are some uh, foreign investors who invest 100%. The Toyota plant and the Ford plant and the Holden plant that are currently being closed down, they're 100% foreign owned. 
Um, Microsoft in Australia is 100% foreign owned. Google in Australia is 100% foreign owned. We're going to talk about the terms of trade next. What this is, is a measure of prices. I want to make this very clear. The terms of trade do not measure volumes, they measure prices. And I'll explain the, uh, how you distinguish between those two in a second. The terms of trade measure the price of exports relative to the price of imports. Okay, so the price of exports, if it goes up and the price of imports remains steady, you get what happens here. This is the Korean War boom, when you had a big spike in export prices. And this is the recent mining boom, where you had a big increase in resource prices. And imports, their prices remain fairly steady relative to export prices. What this does not measure is how much of that you export. So export prices could go through the roof, and if you just start importing a lot more, your trade balance is going to stay the same. In fact, that quite often happens. When the terms of trade increase, you often see an increase in the Australian dollar. And that means we export less, and we import more. Okay, that has to do with volume. It has nothing to do with the price. Right? When the Australian dollar changes its value, the price of exports and imports both change. So the change in the Australian dollar has no impact on this whatsoever. Rookie mistake. The Australian dollar has very little impact on the terms of trade. It does have some indirect impact. The two things I want you to appreciate from this is there were two big spikes in the terms of trade. This spike here was cyclical. That was the Korean War boom, very good. This was cyclical because it was temporary. This spike here has not been temporary. It has been more of a structural change. It's more of a permanent change. It's likely to stay up high for a very long time. And the other factor that comes into this, it's not just increasing resource prices, it's also falling prices of manufacturers. A lot of Asian economies produce very cheap manufactured goods. That reduces the price of imports. And we also see an increase in the price of exports. In the diagram, it shows it's on the way down. In the diagram, it shows it's on the way down. Yeah, it's coming down off a very high base, though. Um, this point here is still well above what it was for most of its history. So it'll go down to a level that stay at its new level. Yes, it's likely to come somewhere around this point. I think this is far too high to stay there permanently. But you're going to see a higher terms of trade than what you had earlier. So could you all please uh, write this down? The terms of trade measure the price received for exports relative to the price received for imports. It does not take into account the volume of trade. And what are the terms of trade? It's the price of exports divided by the price of imports.